Dakota Guide Challenge. Recently, Stan Friend and Sensei hosted a request on Aikido Journal uh, asking people's different opinions about Kotagaishi and um, one of the problems that arises with Kotagaishi, which is uh, when I'm applying the technique, is it possible for Uke to come around and smash me in the jaw? Um, so, first, let's just go ahead and look at the technique. I'm going to show it from Shomenuchi. I think it's a nice position to start from. Okay, so that's the basic technique of Shomenuchi Kotagaishi. Uh, in that, we came, we started from this position. I go to the outside, which is a nice, safe movement. I come, as Mike starts to come around, I'm going to apply Kotagaishi to him. Now, here's where we start to see the problem. Mike can possibly strike me here. Uh, and the first question um, that Sensei asked was, um, could, uh, should we allow Luke to do this? Uh, in my opinion, we should for the practice of Aikido, because this is a safe position for him to take the fall from. You can see here, Mike nicely sets up for a high fall. He's in good position. He's safe. Uh, everything's set up really nice for him. So I think that's the easiest thing for Mike to do. Uh, also, one of the big misnomers about Kodagaishi is Kodagaishi makes people take a high fall. That's incorrect. Kodagaishi puts a lot of torque on this wrist, and if Mike doesn't take a high ball, uh, or otherwise relieve the pressure on his wrist, it's going to damage his wrist. So Mike chooses to take the high ball, and because I'm a good nage, I want to let him take that high ball so it's safe for him. Okay, can the guy should be applied in ways that keeps that from happening? If the timing of my technique is such that I can come right back here, I can possibly apply that technique so Mike cannot come around to strike me. Um, and this is fine in a form, and we always practice it in a form this way, but when we're doing it in a live situation where I don't know what Mike's up to and he might be attacking me in all kinds of different ways, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. And so it's quite a real possibility that when I apply this code of guys, no matter how well I apply it, Mike can still come around and smash me in that face or grab me or do something bad with me. Um, so now we need to really ask a bigger question, I think, which is why would I apply code the guys in the first place? Uh, am I applying code the guys to throw Mike? If the answer is that, if I want to just throw Mike, that's the big deal, and so we get this Kodagaishi position, as Mike comes around, a better option for me is to throw Mike over my hip. It's going to be a higher percentage throw for me. It's going to throw Mike in a nicer way. It's going to put us in a control position really quickly. I would rather do that. So as Mike comes around and punch me in the face, why not just get out of the way that I can set up a nice hip toss here, and uh, that would be a much better idea than trying to apply the Kodagaishi. Um, could the, the question be, uh, or the answer be, that I'm applying to the guy to create a lot of pain in Mike's wrist, right? So I make him think twice about wanting to fight me because I create so much pain in his wrist. Well, if creating pain is, is what I want to do with Mike, why not punch him in the nose? So if the technique went like this, as Mike comes around, why not do this, right? Why not punch Mike before Mike gets a chance to punch me? And in that, I can cover and protect myself from uh, Mike hitting me. Uh, so a good reason that I might need to apply to the guy is if Michael has something uh, in his hand. So if he has a knife in his hand, he's coming down to cut me with the shomenuji, right? He's coming back yeah, right in front of my head. And I stop him here. I cut to the outside. Now if I let go of his hand and punch him, he's going to cut me. Okay? If I try to throw him in this here, Mike's going to be able to cut me. You can see right here, he's coming in to cut me. So that's dangerous. I have to control that weapon. So we're here in this position. As I come out, I come here, and now I'm covering his hand, right, this classic Kotagaishi position. Covering his hand is very hard for Mike to remove the weapon from his hand here. And as he comes around, even if he hits me, what I'm going to manage to do is get the knife from Mike. And when I get the knife, then I don't even care if he hit me, because I'm now in the superior position with the weapon. So the weapon's taking precedent. And this is an old idea of Kumiuchi, where if he strikes me, I want to be able to cut him, right? Uh, and Yuichi was said that this wasn't the idea of Aikido, so we can talk about more stuff from that also. So let's say that as we do this, Mike comes around to strike me. Are there other ways to deal with this? As Mike comes in to strike, I can use my elbow to defend myself. I can also strike Mike with this. As he comes in, if I get the pass, I can also go to other Aikido techniques from here, like Jujinage. So this weapon control doesn't mean that I can't still account for that hand. If it comes in, there's lots of ways to take care of that hand and still apply the Kotagaish. Also, as I take this in, I can apply Kotagaish in a way that brings the blade towards Mike, which makes him get out of the way. Even if I don't disarm, now we're in a position that I can take him over, start to control, and remove the weapon. So I think uh, if we're really going to ask this question about uh, the validity of Kodagash as a technique, we have to consider things outside of pure unarmed methods. Uh, if we're unarmed, I would way rather use uh, a hip toss or just punching someone 
uh, than to fly and kill the Geish. But when we're talking about a weapon, it's a much more serious affair, and I have to keep control of that weapon hand. So I have to find ways to defend myself and keep control. Kill the Geish is an excellent technique for keeping control of the weapon and being able to take care of this guy at the same time. I'm Chris Hine. This is Michael Bear. Thank you very much.